Um, so Catherine, thank you for joining me. I'm excited. It's you and I that got paired together. Yeah. Um, Catherine and I have known each other for, for years. Um, and, uh, and so my name is, is Ed Marr. I handle uh, the key accounts and holding company relationships for Clear Channel. Um, we are, Clear, many of you know this, but Clear Channel is the largest airport media resource, um, media resource company and a much larger outdoor company. Um, Catherine uh, is, you know, has been leading media on the client side at CPG and now at Pharma. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? No, thank you. So what Ed didn't say is that we have met a long time ago, um, many more years that I want to admit, on the agency side. So I've had um, a long career on the agency side, 12 years, last post, Mindshare. And then I got recruited to the dark side uh, and I moved to uh, a, C a large C multinational CPG. Um, where I actually developed marketing procurement for and then I moved to global marketing operations because I guess that they liked me so much that they wanted me to organize uh, global media and marketing operations for them. And then I got recruited back to sort of run global uh, media and digital procurement at Novartis Pharmaceutical where I am a head of um, digital um, global uh, media and digital procurement, uh, working very closely with all our business units, um, um, you know, on the mission to bring more effectiveness and efficiency into our all our media investments. Yes, all all of our conversations over the years have been uh, have been great. Sometimes challenging, always honest, and driving towards what Catherine just described. Business outcomes is her focus, and and that's why she's in the role she's in. Um, so, Catherine, can you speak to us to get started about, you know, your omni-channel, your team's omni-channel approach, um, the, 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 the different channels that you use and, and, what they're, and what KPIs they're driving? Yeah, so I think that you guys probably are sick and tired of uh, listening or hearing the word omni-channel, but, you know, it's a flavor of the day. So I think that, um, you know, going back to the all this is all about media buying, right? When I started in the industry, we talked about the proper media mix and the channel mix. And, you know, do you guys remember all rich and frequencies, right? Like, ha, huh. nobody talks about it anymore. But at the end of the day, what Omnichannel truly is, it's still, you know, how do we get, um, you know, our, you know, large, you know, largest reach? How do we drive, um, the audiences or how do we connect with our audiences and how do we do it with still the traditional media math? I mean, there is this equation still holds true, right? So I think that the biggest, um, you know, challenge right now is how do we actually get to that incremental reach and how do we actually drive it with the right mix, media mix channels? And I think that those uh, media mixes can be completely different or they're all a little different depending on what category you're in um, and you know having spent many years on the far on the CPG side it's a little different for the CPG companies than it is for pharma companies I think pharma companies are a bit more challenged because our audiences are obviously much more niched and defined and we also live in a much more regulated space um, and it is so much different to advertise to a sufferer from, you know, maybe a serious disease than it is to somebody who needs to brush their teeth every day. So it is just that difference that makes um, pharma advertisers being a little bit more precise and using more data points and spending more time thinking about what is each channel in in media going to you know give me in my overall um, you know reach um, impressions and you know what is that role of that channel and can I be in this channel due to all our regulations that we need to live with right? But to answer your question, I mean we're obviously. Um, in TV, I mean, who out of the audience didn't switch on prime time and didn't see one pharma ad after the other? I mean, I'm like, oh my goodness, right? I'm like living my old CPG years when 
I had to fight that I have a separation, you know, a competitive separation in prime time. Now this switched and flipped and it's pharma advertisers. Um, so of course, you know, we're in linear TV. We are of course in digital, but we're also in CTV. We are in all the digital channels. We are in what we call the endemic partners because obviously we, you know, target the healthcare professionals, but we're also targeting uh, consumers. We also are in, you know, um, consumer channels. So our media mix is, is um, complex and we are a large spender, um, you know, on the, on the typical media arena. Uh, but we're constantly looking and evaluating what other media channels we can add to get to that more incremental reach. Yeah, so the, um, in the spirit of our traditional conversations, working towards solving that at a home is, is my knowledge, and it's not always gonna be the solution for everything. In that case, there are benefits to it. Um, and so increment, in, incrementality of reach is really a, uh, a strong benefit. Um, we're seeing it now, we've always known it, right? There's a very broad audience out, out of home reaches, um, but now with the precision of audience-based planning, of outdoor, um, we're now, uh, it's now proving out, we're understanding targeting multiples, um, we're seeing uh, you know incremental conversions um, online, offline, um, and, and, that's, uh, and that's proving out something we've always thought to be true. Um, so that's a really uh, encouraging uh, thing to, to understand. Um, and it becomes, you know, you've always challenged me to, you know, I've, I've, I've probably approached you knocking some of the other channels and we've landed on, but it's more complimentary, right? Like yeah. how can it be complimentary? Um, the, the, the strength of broadcast is its reach and with you know, some of the audiences um, moving on to streaming um, that we're adding the incremental reach there. Um, when it comes to digital, right? That's yeah. the second bu big mm -hmm. bucket where the money is going. Mm -hmm. um, from a complementary perspective, are there things outdoor can do to complement your digital efforts? Um, and I suspect the digital efforts are, are generally uh, meant, to be, meant to be that one-to-one -one engagement for deeper mm -hmm. engagement, right? Yeah. Um, can you can you you have some familiarity with yeah. outdoor? Yeah. Is there is there are there benefits you see with? Uh, yeah. So you know, in my uh, long media career on both procurement and the media side, I always ask the question: What kind of benefits can you bring to the table? Right? How can you add and complement my media mix? And you know, I've challenged um, uh, you know out of home because in my previous CPG company um, uh, experience. They didn't do a lot of out of home at all. And, you know, when um, when Clear Channel or other vendors came to sell um, out of home, I would always say, what can you bring to the table? What's your point of difference? How can you add and complement my existing media mix, right? And, um, you know, uh, we, we started educating on the benefits of out of home. Um, and, you know, my previous CPG company has actually embraced it, but, um, and was able to actually do and do more of out of home. But the reason why is that they were able to prove it out with data. And it was small, you know, sort of test and learns that turn into much larger investment. And the reason is because they were able to justify that it actually that out of home worked and it provided them with that incremental reach that they were looking for towards the audiences they were looking you know, to reach. And Ed, you can tell them a little bit, the audience a little bit more about uh, that journey, um, you know, of the CPG. And it's something that now we're trying to um, educate, uh, you know, the pharma company that there is a benefit of using this channel to do exactly that, to get that incremental reach and ability to then retarget 101, um, which exists those days with the data. So, you know, maybe you can um, talk a little bit about how that's possible. 
Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, what uh, it was an incredible progression um, that we experienced together at your last uh, role at the CPG company, um, where um, you know it really is at its core is we've standardized the 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 outdoor impression into a data point that can be used across platforms um, and and plugged into measurement uh, into measurement solutions, right? Um, and so. So with that and with these concepts that we all believed in, we're able to now prove them out, right? And get the clarity we need to really point to things at the end of campaigns and say, hey, this did work. Let's do it again. Let's do it bigger. Um, and that is what we experienced um, uh, together. Uh, so, so the so the idea was the idea there was can we use um, the can we use audience segments to plan outdoor? And we've done that right via our in that in many cases we're using our destination on live ramp uh, it's syndicated audiences are syndicated us mapped against our outdoor the highest inde indexing outdoor is activated so we can be very confident data driven confidence that we're that we're getting to the audience um, and then we can do things like uh, cross channel. Uh, so we can, the out, outdoor, you can imagine high impact outdoor has a pretty good priming effect is how we're starting to describe it. Uh, this kind of breakthrough branding and then that's, um, and then, and then sequentially messaged with, you know, with all this cross channel capabilities we, we now have for the generally digitally to the deeper engagements that, that they offer, right? Those channels offer. Um, so, so now that's driving, you know, an incredible, incredible results, uh, the one, two punch there. And, and we're seeing it in the measurement as it proves out, right? So uh, in, the, in the case of uh, Catherine and I, um, we went at them with these new solutions. Um, they, t there was some testing and learning, and it's now into this, and the audiences into proving out against their big KPI, which is brand metrics, although we're measuring for everything, including script lift uh, these days. Um, and so, uh, so driving their, K their KPI, proving it out, into the next system and it's we're now in a virtuous cycle of budgets that continue to grow yeah. um and uh and now what we're doing so now we've 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 done that and i guess we're just following catherine around because we've started at cpg and now we have this solution in the pharma space um really clear channel has pioneered uh the integration of privacy compliant healthcare data to integrate into our radar system our radar platform um and and that's and, and that's, that was really the beginning solving for all that with the considerations for privacy and HIPAA compliance. And, uh, and, and it's that, it's those solutions leading into the measurement, tying out their exposures to script lift, seeing a double digit, very high double digit new incremental script lifts is really the the payoff at the end so how does that apply? so yeah. now let me yeah. just chime in so now they're into a bigger challenge because now they have to prove that uh, they can drive script lift right like um and i think that with the new data that they have um you know they are um trying to take up this challenge but uh you know what what's really important to me is why i always appreciated the role of out of home in my overall media mix outside of the data is also um, there is not a lot of other media that can connect with you one-on-one -on -one in an extremely personal way and why out, why out of home can do that is because when you think about strategic use of out of home is like you either pick cherry pick locations that are close to let's say strategic places right so they can be close to the um, let's say doctor's offices or they can be at the airport when you go into a convention think about being HCP going to a convention in Las Vegas I land at the airport what do I see? I see uh, a billboard. I see a poster that says, hey, meet me in booth 35 at a convention center. And, you know, I am brand X. I don't even want to, you know, put a, a brand there. Uh, but it's so powerful because you make this one on one connection and you make it in the places where resonate with that particular target audience. Um, and then you can tie it with a super impactful creative. And that's what really is a home run for me because not, you know, not a lot of other media channels have that power.
power of having that trifecta um, effect, I would say, on your on your target audience. Um, you know, we watch TV and we skip. Skip. We, you know, in digital channels, we mostly close off whether it's a video or escape all our banners, right? So it's very easy to actually get away from the advertisement. It's very from other channels, but it's very difficult to get away from the billboard that stares you in the face. It's very difficult to get away. I cannot, I take subway to um, to the city or to work every day or, you know, the days that I come in and I ride the subway and I st stare at the little billboards on my subway train for 45, 30 minutes every day. There's nothing more impactful than that. Um, and if that's paired with the right creative, it's absolutely amazing. And I will tell you this little story. Years ago, we were trying to um, sign a big direct partnership with one of the larger digital platforms. And that digital, digital platform came to us and they said, you know what? You're not really exactly quite ready yet to sign a big partnership with us, right? Because you need to be able to market and have the creative absolutely ready for your medium. And because in the digital platform, in that digital platform, you don't connect with a 30 second spot. And that's what we were really good at doing. We were absolutely great at doing 30 second commercials. That's how our marketing was based on doing those amazing 30 second commercials. But in that digital platform, the 30 second commercial, that content did not resonate. So they came to us and they say, you know what? Learn how to amazingly do three second digital billboard ads. And once you master that, you'll be ready for that big partnership. And it was so true and it resonated because with me, because I was not doing out of home from, I was doing out of home and then I wasn't doing out of home for many years. And I was saying to myself, wow, this is super impactful because that's how people right now connect with advertisement in all like the digital spaces. They don't want 60 second long pharma ad. That was my biggest strug struggle in the pharma because we love long formats and we have to for, you know, a lot of regulatory reasons, right? But, you know, how do you take that and how do you, how do you make a creative messaging in that digital billboard impactful way is, you know, is really, truly amazing. And that's where I see that, that, that sweet spot that out of home has and can bring to the table for us. Um, I, I'll, I'll go off script here with, um, you know, Lee Klaus, some of you might recognize the name. He was the famous art director for Apple at Shiat uh, West Coast. Um, he uh, the reason Apple is such a big outdoor user. There are a few reasons, but one of the big reasons is that he leads every pitch and, and every brand development approach with simplifying the message, really br bringing the message down. If you and his opinion was if you can communicate your message on a billboard, then you can communicate it everywhere. Now that's, and, and so I'm gonna pull some of what you were saying, that's more true today than it's ever been. And that ties to the, the consumer attention span, right? Uh, they say we now, we're now one second less than a goldfish, six, seven, eight seconds. And, and outdoor is, you know, outdoor offers their three to five second uh, impression on the highway, at maybe the last ponder moment we have in our consumer lives, right? Um, so, um, so, so the challenge with creative is is a big one with pharma, and and a lot of it is is the is the is the PI, right? Um, can you speak to that? And I could touch on some of the solutions we've worked towards. Um, but did you want to describe? So maybe you can tell the audience what PI stands for. Um, so it's the disclaimer. If it, you know, as it relates to you know different channels, it's it's used a little bit differently. But with outdoor, as soon as a benefit of the of the drug is mentioned, uh, they need to then uh, disclose all this information. So this uh, patient information PI is what that is. It's exactly right. So you can just imagine that it's a little bit more difficult than marketing toothpaste. But um, um, you know, we obviously have been added for a while now and there is ways of how we can actually 
put PEI information not exactly on, on that particular medium, but we always have to have call outs to drive patients to the places like a book of record or our website, which goes through, you know, pages. Like when we go to a book of record, which is a magazine we choose for that particular audience, we buy spreads, we buy four pages because we do need to, for legal reasons, to disclaim everything. Um, and, and it's very important to us, obviously, because, um, you know, we, it's, it's obviously what we do, like our medications need to help, but they, you know, we have to disclose everything about our medication. Uh, but that's the way, you know, that we can go um, a little bit, we can be a little bit more impactful in the, um, in some of the media tactics that require or where the messaging should be more succinct, right? Like we, we don't have seven pages. And actually, Ed and I talk about this because he has some examples that he showed me about some out of home um, creative executions from some of the um, other pharma companies, which we will we will not name the names of, but um, you know they try to fit the entire PI information onto the billboard, and really then what what happens is you you don't really even know what the message is, right? So. Um, so basically, you know, we need to find different ways of put our compliant ways, I should um, stress it, how to still, you know, communicate our PI information. But I think that we need to work with the medium and, and keep it impactful and keeping it impactful in digital spaces as well as in outdoor. Um, and there's this, you know, interesting connection that does both um media tactics have is that succinct short messaging that people can engage with and then drive them somewhere else where they are really engaged with the brand name have them learn all about you know the pros and cons of this medication and actually this is not what pharma is in the business of actually we spend uh, money to drive the name of the brand towards the consumers for one reason and the reason is that the pa the potential patient or a patient can actually go to a healthcare physician a doctor and say would that medication be appropriate for me and it's still not up to that patient to say this is the drug for me it's still for a physician to prescribe that medication to the patient i mean that's that's the you know that's sort of like the 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 idea of pharma advertising. Um, yeah, the um, and I'll go back to something you said at the beginning, which was um, where w w the way we're overcoming it. Uh, there are new solutions. These data solutions are solving some of this concern with the PI, um, the clutter that ends up on on the space. How do we reduce that? And so what we're doing is is we can now see we can now. Uh, because of the standardization of these exposures, right, and the ability to to, to share them uh, across channel, um, the advertisers are now able to leverage the channels for what they're good at, right? And outdoor, what's outdoor good at? Outdoor is good at breakthrough branding. What's digital good at? Deeper engagement, right? The ISI, the uh, the client connection, the click through to the doctor, if it might be. Um, and so um, and so now and that's what's starting to happen. So so the so the outdoor is used as the priming channel right for with just the branding and simplicity of ad and, and graphic and then that deeper uh, engagement uh, digitally and uh, cross channel um, yeah but also what is good for is this incremental reach so one of my favorite topics and I don't know if it's yours but I I, I think you might be is um, you know when we are running, we are all obsessed about digital transformation, right? Digital is the what we all want to do. My only problem right now with running TV, linear TV, CTV, online video is frequency. And you know it's the animal in the room. I mean, it's the elephant in the room for me because when you have those fully you know, digital plans with all these channels, the frequency, if you don't, if you don't learn how to manage the frequency or cop the frequency in the right way, it's actually frequencies through the roof. So, you know, that is what I am trying to sort of solve the puzzle of how do you control for, you know, 
the high frequency and still going back to my traditional media buyer, uh, you know, sort of like uh, education, we were also taught that too much frequency is not a good thing right? Too much frequency is actually a bad thing because it actually contributes to waste. Um, and you, you know, we all know from economics is that there is the laws of diminishing returns. So what the digital offer is unlimited supply of impressions, which is a great thing, but it's also a dangerous thing because it lures us to um, over frequencing. And I think, you know, learning, still going back to your basic media math, you know, uh, where the frequency should be capped at a certain level to be actually to give you an effective reach is, you know, what I, what I really would aspire to in our media plans. And so after you saturate, you know, or close, come close within the right frequency numbers between your linear and your CTV, um, and your online video, because at the end of the day, this is all your video space, sort of. How do you then go and break through that incremental reach? You need to add additional tactics to get your audience from different spaces. And, I, and, and that's the beauty of, to me, adding, you know, out of home and not just to be like, you know, an other media tactics, like for me, also audio or radio is something untapped and quite interesting. So, you know, because usually you go TV and obviously TV is amazing. CTV, digital, YouTube, and then adding other channels. And that, that is, that is great. That is one of the solutions here too, is, is the, uh, the ability, can we introduce a new effective channel to reduce burnout rate on other channels, yeah. drive a better path to conversion. Uh, uh, yeah. Can I get so, you guys something at the bar here? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I get think you this guys is a sign that we are, we, uh, so thank you. We're thank done. you, Catherine, so, thank you. so much. Thank you, thank you, Mark. <laughs> thank you, Paul. And, uh, thanks everyone. See us if you have questions. Thank you.